You may be aware of Robert Oppenheimer, the American physicist known as the father of the atomic bomb, for his key role in the Manhattan Project. But did you know that among the scientists on this world-changing project was a spy passing atomic secrets to the Soviet Union? Klaus Fuchs was born in Germany in 1911 to a deeply religious family. In 1932, he joined the German Communist Party, but shortly afterwards, he fled the Nazi regime and came to Britain as a refugee. A brilliant physicist, he became involved in Britain's early nuclear research. And then, in 1944, he was sent to join the Manhattan Project in the Los Alamos desert, where he would help develop the first atomic bomb. This is Klaus Fuchs's photograph for his security pass at Los Alamos in 1944, when he was aged 33. I don't know quite what to make of his eyes. There's a rather blank, lost look about him. It's been said that his features made him look like a typical boffin, someone that's interested in all things scientific, but not much else. But there was much more to Fuchs than that. His fellow scientists trusted him, they respected him, and he even babysat for one scientist and his wife. But all the time, he was passing vital atomic secrets to the Soviet Union. When the Soviets tested their own atomic bomb in 1949, it came as a great shock to the West. Fuchs had saved the Soviet Union about two years worth of research, but his colleagues and friends suspected nothing. In the autumn of 1949, Fuchs became a person of interest to the security service MI5. Fuchs was put under surveillance and interviewed several times by skillful MI5 officer Jim Scarden. Again and again, Fuchs denied passing secrets, but he eventually cracked and confessed. In his statement, he discusses compartmentalizing his life and his feelings. In one compartment were his personal relations and friendships, and in the other compartment was his duty to the Soviet Union and communism. And this gives an interesting insight into the psychology of spying. I was really struck by a paragraph on the last page of his confession. Fuchs says, since coming to Hartwell, I have met English people of all kinds, and I have come to see in many of them a deep-rooted firmness which enables them to lead a decent way of life. I do not know where this springs from, and I don't think they do, but it is there. For him to go off at this reflective tangent after having just confessed to hugely significant espionage is certainly a strange business. To me, it confirms that Fuchs did not seem to realize the import of what he had confessed to. He had relieved himself of a terrible burden and it would all be cleared up now. Well, Fuchs was tried at the Old Bailey in 1950, found guilty of espionage, and given the maximum sentence, 14 years in prison. He was inevitably stripped of his British citizenship. He received parole due to good behavior and was released in 1959. He immediately flew to East Germany, where he was to spend the rest of his days. It is incredible to think of the first atomic bomb test in the desert south of Los Alamos on the 16th of July, 1945, which Fuchs observed with his fellow scientists wearing welder's goggles. It is mind-boggling to reflect how Fuchs might have felt witnessing this truly awesome spectacle to which he had made a significant contribution, a game-changing new weapon, the details of which he had shared with a foreign power. The stakes could not have been higher. Tracing the story of Klaus Fuchs is like walking through a hall of distorted mirrors. But you can take a shortcut by listening to my podcast about him, or you can download some of the rich and detailed security service MI5 files about him from our catalogue at the National Archives. Thank you for listening.